Assalamu alaikum. How are you students? Okay. Class. The last time we have dis we are discussing about the fundamental chapter number one fundamentals of computer. And uh, we have learned about the introduction to computer, evolution of computer. We are discussing, and uh, we have discussed its three ages. That the first one is a dark age, the second is a middle age, and the third one is a modern age. So we have completed the dark age, in which we have discussed about the abacus. Napier bones, slide rules, Pascaline, Leibniz, Babbage, and after that we also discuss about the mechanical era, which is also known as the Middle Age, in which we discuss about the Hermann Hollerith tabulating machine. Today we will discuss about the electronic era, that is also known as the Modern Age. the advancement in the vacuum or electron tube gave the birth to the electronic era in this era the true computer were invented which work on the principle of input store process and output continuous uh, advancement in electronic engineering increased efficiency and speed of computer considerably the electronic era may be categorized in generations on the basis of core technology used to build computer okay beta in this a modern age actually what happened that uh, we have the vacuum tubes or electron tubes which were actually very important for the modern computing okay the first generation of computer the first generation was from 1940 to 1956 based on a vacuum tube a first generation computer were very large in size this generation computer used machine language um, that is ones and zeros magnetic drum were used as a primary internal storage medium remember that what was the primary storage medium that was magnetic drum and punch card for input just like a uh, keyboard we are using today so at that era we use uh, punch cards to enter the data you can easily get information about the punch cards and uh, uh, magnetic drums on internet in this generation mainly uh, batch processing operating system was used computers of this generation were primarily primarily used for scientific and research purpose only remember that that computer were only used for science and research purpose you cannot do anything else right computer of this generation okay <coughs> electronic numerical integration and calculator anec and the universal automatic computer univec are the examples of first generation anec and univec are the example of that generation okay second generation of computer 
Because of transistor, computer become smaller, faster, cheaper, and more efficient. Assembly language and high level language photon were introduced. Magnetic core was used as a primary internal storage medium. Punch card were used for input and the batch processing and multi programming operating system were used. These computers were mainly used for commercial productions, scientific and engineering analysis and design. Examples IBM 7094 and IBM 1401. So, beta, in this second generation, we use uh, transistors. Why? For the uh, purpose of what? Hmm. Anyone else tell me? You can send message on the chat. Tell me why we use this? Exactly, we use this for processing, right? Nowadays, we are using a microprocessor for the same purpose, but at that time, we use a in the second generation, we use transistor, and then in, in first generation, we use vacuum tubes for the same purpose. Third generation, that is from 1964 to 1971. Okay, the use of ICs further decrease size of computer and increase the speed of the speed and efficiency less expensive computer were introduced high level programming languages such as pascals and cobols were used keyboards as input and monitor as output also ease of ease the use of computer Time sharing and real time operating system were used. The use of computers was extended to database management and automatic industrial control. IBM 360 and IBM 370 are the examples of this generation computers. But in third generation, we use actually a uh, integrated circuit for the hmm, processing. In this generation, high level programming languages are also evolved, such as um, Pascal and COBOL, which we use on in that time and that era. Mm, Pascal and COBOL are also using nowadays for just learning purpose, nothing else, right? If you do um, BSc of a two year after uh, intermediate BSc with the computer subjects, then you will learn this Pascal language there. Otherwise, you will not touch this language in your uh, professional era or education. I mean, if you um, take admission in the four year of BS computer science or software engineering after inter then you will not learn this Pascal language. But if you take admission in a two year program of BSc or BCS, then you will learn this language there. Because it's very old language and outdated. So it's not included in the new syllabus. Okay. So, beta integrated circuits were used and in that uh, uh, computer of the third generation for the processing. Next, we have a fourth generation of computer that is from 1971 to present. The invention of microprocessors was revolutionary 
which cause the development of faster less expensive smaller and more reliable computer they use a semiconductor memories ram and rom and magnetic storage become popular more high level languages were introduced like c or c++ java etc these computers are used in almost every field of life like uh, space application business and art work vice versa better remember the c++ is now also include in your syllabus of matric class computer so inshallah in matric class you will learn about the c++ programming language which is very good step from uh, the sin government which has been taken now because um, if i just ex- give you example of myself then i learn this language first time in my graduation when i started my uh, bs of computer science for their program in the second semester i have started this uh, started to learn this language in the university so now imagine that how good it is that you will learn the same language in the matric class so i hope that your future is very bright in the field of computer because now our syllabus is day by day updating java which is also very powerful languages very powerful language um, we use java to make many different applications many different uh, websites apis so for example you are using android cell phone nowadays it is now also available in your hand right now so the application which you are using zoom is also developed with the help of this java language i'm not sure about it that whether it's a, a hybrid application or native uh, which you are using but if it's a native application then the possibilities are that it is developed with the help of this java language because um, android native programming or android native development can only be possible with the help of this java language and one more is kotlin kotlin is a um, quite new thing than this java so <coughs> chances are that it's developed with the help of java but if it's a hybrid application means uh, multiple platform application for both platform like uh, android and ios then there are the chances to develop with the help of uh, react native or flutter well time sharing a real time and distributive distributed operating system are used what these type of um, uh, operating systems are we will uh, discuss about it in the next chapter that is operating system fundamentals of operating system so we'll discuss about these all that what is time sharing what is real time or what is um, batch processing operating systems are we will discuss there in detail so leave it right now This generation also saw the development of graphical user interface or GUI. Examples are Apple or Macintosh, IBM PCs. So nowadays, whatever the computer we are using, which is available on your your home, your schools, our offices, everywhere. that is actually belong to the same generation that is gen- fourth generation computer right all the macbooks or apple or macintosh computer this is actually the same apple computer also known as the macintosh macintosh is actually the older name of the same computers nowadays it's known as uh, like uh, apple macbook macbook air mac mini imac and apple mac pro so these all are the t- 
types of the same company products right after that okay uh, in this generation beta four generation we use a processor microprocessor that is a very huge revolution in the computer era because uh, with this computer are become so smaller in the size because in the first second and third generation computer size was very big especially in the first and second generation the computer size was very huge you can imagine that uh, the user have to be enter into the computer to use it <laughs> i mean computer is just like a very huge building you have to enter into the building to operate the same computer okay next we have a fifth generation computer present and beyond fifth generation computing devices are still being developed it's still being developed in this generation computer will be capable of self learning reasoning and generalize generalization these computers or controlled machine or robots will also be able to process human language the branches of ai ai means artificial intelligence include machine languages machine learning sorry deep learning natural learning processing robotics and expert system <coughs> beta this fifth generation is a very 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 revolutionized world it's a it's a what i say i am not getting the exact word for this actually it's a future of the computer because nowadays everything is converting to the ai artificial intelligence our computers are going to be very smart day by day our devices are going to be very smart they understand our ourself means for example i'm using my cell phone my cell phone can understand me it actually shows the ads related to my interest for example i'm using a uh, facebook right so i'm scrolling my wall and suddenly i got the ad from any any company for example daraz and it shows me the products which are related to my interest for example i am interested to finding about the new pc for example few days ago i was searching uh, for the new pc or uh, the new table setup for my uh, computer i mean desk setup so when i i will scroll then i suddenly got the same suggestion as an ad so how it is possible because of machine learning my computer my mobile is a machine and it learn about myself it learn about my interest right so this is also known as a machine learning so deep learning and natural language processing these all are these all are the words which is used for the fifth generation and artificial intelligence so we will discuss about it further more in detail later okay next is classification of computer 
ओके बेटा कंप्यूटर कैन बी क्लासिफाइड इन टू डिफरेंट वेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन क्लासीफाइड अकॉर्डिंग टू द टेक्नोलॉजी और टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा हैंड इन यू कैन ऑल्सो क्लासीफाइड बाय द साइज और ऑल्सो बाय द पर्पज इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द टाइप ऑफ डेटा हैंडल देन वी हैव थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप The first is analog, the second is digital, and the third is hybrid computer. Right? According to the technology, we have these three different types of a computer. Okay, if we uh, classify the computer according to size or by size, then we have a five, a uh, four different types. the super computer the mainframe computer the mini computer and the micro computer and if we classify it according to purpose then we have a two different type the general purpose and the special purpose computer now we will discuss about each and every one in detail first of all according to technology according to technology or type of data they handle computer are classified into three types the first one is analog analog computer are used to process analog data analog data are in the form of continuously varying physical quantities like um, pressure temperature voltage speed and weight examples examples of analog computers are speedometer of a car or voltmeter etc just look at here this is a voltmeter so it has a needle here right just look at here it has a needle so this needle actually gives us a values of uh, variation of uh, for example it's a voltmeter so it will give us a value of uh, voltages okay next we have digital computers digital computer are most commonly used type of computer they are used to process information with quantities using the binary number system zeros and ones digital computers are used in home education educational institutes office business science science fields etc the computer you are using is a basically the type of digital computer digital watch is also with the type of digital computer calculator is also type of digital computer right next we have the hybrid computer hybrid computer are the combination of analog and digital computer means it's a combo of both these computer combine analog and digital features of the computer in a single machine a hybrid computer uses analog to digital and digital to analog conversion it may input or output either digital or analog data you can you can watch uh, this uh, this is a voltmeter device which is a digital device you can also say and it is also a analog device because the voltages are the um, analog um, type of the uh, Uh, signals so this device is basically a hybrid computer which convert the analog signals into the digital so you can watch this um, digital value on the screen right and sometime it also have to convert this digital into the analog values now the second type for the classification of computer right the first we have discussed this one now the second is according to size 
computer are also divided into four groups according to their size super computer is the first one <coughs> super computer are the most powerful fastest and largest computer they are ex extremely expensive these computers are widely used in the scientific applications such as uh, aerodynamics design simulation processing of geographical data weather forecasting and uh, nuclear research remember beta uh, this is a very f powerful computer it has uh, thousands of microprocessor in a single computer thousands gbs of uh, memory in the form of ram and also same for the uh, storage capacity but this all power will focus a single task at a time i mean we have a micro computer at our uh, home or on our desk which can handle a multiple task in a single time but this super computer can only do a single task at a time and it will use its all the power for that single task so it can easily produce a very accurate accurate result now the question is that why we use this we use this for the scientific application we use this to design the simulation for example if you have to develop a aeroplane which cost a billions of dollars so how you will develop will you make that aeroplane and just try to fly that machine no first of all you need its complete uh, uh, values of a thermodynamics so how you will try to check that whether it will work fine or not the design which you are making will work perfectly or not you need a simulation for that so in this super computer you can make a <coughs> design simulation so after that you can check your design whether it will work or not whether it will fly or not so you will not cost the life of the people <coughs> for this purpose that you will just uh, make a aeroplane and try to fly that also for the weather forecasting for example you can measure the temperature of your room by using any device but what if you have to predict the weather of next day or the ne next after so what you will do you need a prediction device and that prediction device is this super computer it will actually check from the satellite <coughs> that uh, at which direction the air is at which direction the pollution is and vice versa and according to the very complicated formula it will evaluate approximately exact weather forecasting for the future you can check it through your mobile phone but mobile phone can only sync the data which is available on the server so how that server actually got that values of course with the help of this super computer this super computer generate the result and upload to the servers so s after that our cell phone fetch that data from the servers 
next we have mainframe computer and also use that supercomputer for the nuclear research right okay mainframe computer mainframe computers are powerful multi-user and multi-processors computer they can process huge amount of calculation at a very high speed mainframes are also very expensive and required a lot of technical expertise to be installed and operate they are used in banks and uh, many large business organization where several user work simultaneously you have seen these um, uh, mainframe computer in the NASA as well may be possible that you have seen a video in which they are just launching their um, uh, their uh, rocket and for that all the people are on the front of the many different screens do you know that all screens are attached with the single computer and that computer is basically the mainframe right so it's a multi-purpose and multi-user computer because it has a multiple processors it has a very large amount of memory so that is mainframe the next we have mini computer these are smaller than the mainframes computers but they are also more powerful than microprocessor microcomputer sorry mini computer usually use uh, multiple user or multi user operating system and the multiple user can use the microcomputers sorry mini computer through terminals mini computers may be used as a network server and internet servers DECVAX and IBM AS400 are good examples of the mini computer basically with a mini computer is just like a servers right which is available on the internet and you as a user can use these servers by the help of terminals now what do you mean by terminal terminal means your own computer right for example if I just uh, open the browser and write any uh, URL or website then what happened my request goes towards the server which is available on internet server is just like another computer right which is connected to the internet so my request goes there and fetch the data according to my uh, requirement or my um, uh, my command so fetch that data to my computer so the computer of uh, my end is like a terminal so you can use your own terminal to fetch the data from the mini computer okay now the question is that why we use this why we use these mini computer but uh, remember that the mini computer are especially used for the scientific purpose for the research purpose right it's uh, quite bigger than the microcomputer which are available in our home or offices or school so its size is quite big and it's very powerful and these all three computer which we have discussed like uh, supercomputer mainframe and mini computer these all three types are very 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 reliable computers means if they have uh, any problem or any component damage then you don't need to switch off these computer to replace that component because they have uh, multiple same components available means uh, multiple processors multiple rams multiple storage devices so if you need to replace any device then you don't need to switch off these devices you can do that without switching it off but the computer which we are using at our home like laptop or desktop PCs we cannot do this 
if we have to replace like ram then we must have to shut it off first otherwise your motherboard will burn so don't try this okay okay micro computers micro computer are also called personal computers pcs the use of microprocessor has made computer cheaper yet faster and more individuals sorry more reliable these are the smallest computer designed to be used by the individuals pcs can cause uh, sorry pcs can be used for variety of tasks like documentation calculation illustration and entertainment the power of network and internet has also made it more useful now computer are also used for communication and socialization so the computer which we are using is basically the micro computer okay student so this is end of today's lecture lecture today we have discussed the generations of computer in which we have uh, learn about the first generation where we have uh, vacuum tubes in the second generation where we have a transistor the third generation which is used um integrated circuit or ics in the fourth generation we use uh, microprocessors and the fifth generation which means uh, artificial intelligence or humanoid robots after that we have discussed about the classification of computer we have a uh, three different types of classification according to data handle according to size and according to purpose and uh, from these three we have discussed two types types of data handle in which we have analog digital and hybrid and after that we discuss according to the size i mean classification of computer according to the size which in which we have discussed about the super computer mainframe computer mini computer and micro computer and inshallah in the next lecture we will discuss about the classification of computer according to purpose so inshallah we'll again meet in the next lecture till then take care and allah hafiz